Welcome back to the channel, it's Chris from L3D. Today I'm going to be showing you how to engrave metal business cards. Now if you've seen my series, you will know I've done these before, but that was for text and for vector images. Today's episode is going to be showing you how to actually take an image, adjust it in Xtool Studio and engrave it onto the business card, sharing our settings with you, sharing the whole process. If you'd like to learn how, stick around and I'll show you absolutely everything. Here we have our machine again, and I want to show you the business cards I'm using to start off with. These are 0.45 millimeter thick aluminium anodized black business cards, and you can pick them up in massive packs. I mean, this is a pack I purchased, and they're relatively cheap. I like these 0.5 millimeter thick ones because they are good quality. They are not flimsy, they're fairly strong, and they're actually a really premium feeling item. You can get thinner ones, but they are floppy and I'm not a big fan of them. So in terms of placement, you can easily just place them on your build plate like that and it will be absolutely fine. In this case though, I, as with most of my other videos, and you're probably seeing a trend now, I like to use, for one-offs, I like to use my self-centering jig. And the reason for it is I can just lock it down, rotate it and angle it exactly as I need to. And you'll see why this is important in a minute. Once we've got it in our jig, you can see the blue and the red dot are not joined up. So we need to focus the laser. We are gonna manually do this as a precautionary method first, just so we're happy with where it is. Using the knob on the side, we're gonna turn it anti-clockwise and that is gonna lower the head. And you should see the two dots will join and we now know we are basically manually focused there to a good point. Let's move over to Xtool Studio. So here we are, we are on the Xtool Studio homepage and on the top right, you're gonna see new project. So we're gonna click on that and you'll probably hear a beep behind me. My machine has automatically connected. There is a green symbol there that represents that. If you have more than one machine, you might need to click this button and select your machine. We're good in this case. So I've shown you how to manually focus the laser just as a way of good habit. However, what we will do here is we will also use the autofocus. You'll see behind me the laser is going to dim down, it's going to take a reading, and then it's going to turn back up again. And then what we should get is an updated picture and a focus number on the right hand side. So there's our number 15.4 millimeters. And as you can see, our business card is positioned where we want it. So let's move on to the next step. Now that we have our item positioned on the screen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import an image. So for this demonstration, I am showing you photographs and I wanted to do something a bit more challenging. And what you'll find with photographs is if you actually have a family portrait photo, for example, the characters in the pictures are a lot smaller. So the dot duration and the dots per inch is a bit different. Whereas if you've got a one-off portrait photo of one person projected, taking up the whole business card, then you can have more DPI. So I'm gonna do a family portrait to start with, and I might actually do a single portrait after just to show you the differences, because it will actually dictate the settings that we use. So that being said, let's import our image. So I've got a family photo shoot here and there is a photo. You might have seen this on my slate engraving video where I've cut the background out. This is an image recently taken of me and my family and it's a really good one to demonstrate to you because there is a lot going on in this picture. So we need really refined settings to make sure that everything still stands out and it doesn't get washed out with detail. The first thing we need to determine is how we want our picture. Some people like to oversize their image so you could put it bigger than the business card and that way it will literally fill up the whole business card with your image. In this case, obviously with my jig, I wouldn't be able to do that. Other people like to have a little bit of a space so you can make it smaller and position it like that. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna apply a mask and to do that, I'm gonna go into the elements tab and within the basic shapes, there's lots of different ones. I like this shape here. So what I'm actually gonna do is position that to a point where I like it. And I'm gonna turn off the aspect ratio lock by clicking that button, because then what it will allow me to do is position it roughly the size of the business card. So I'm gonna do that, line it up in the middle, and then move it downwards a bit. It doesn't matter at the moment, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then what we're gonna do is position our picture in approximately the right position. And for this picture, we do want the aspect ratio lock on because we don't want it to look weird. And I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so that the photo basically, and if you drag from the middle, it will actually make the whole thing bigger like that. I want the photo to take up the whole width of that shape, but I also want enough of us left in it that it's gonna be a nice picture. 
So I want the moon to be in it. I want us as subjects to be in it. And what I can do at this point is I can drag that down a bit more there to capture some arms in there. But that's good overall. So now that we've got our shape, our vector shape, and we've got our photo, what we're going to do now is drag a box around everything, right click on the workspace, and we are going to create a mask. And you're going to see it's going to lighten the area outside of our shape. Now we're going to click done. And what we've then got is a nice shaped photo, which I can now actually take a bit more time to position. And all I'm going to do is fill out as much as I can with it. I'm going to have a slight border around the outside. But there you go. That's going to sit in there. And I think that will look quite nice, to be honest with you. And I just want to show you a few different tricks in one here. So that's why I'm masking. So there you go. We've got our photo. But there's something else we need to remember now. With dark surfaces, so dark anodized metals, dark levers, other items as well, like dark 3D printed materials, you're going to engrave back to front. It's going to look inverted. If you engraved here, anything on that photo that is light, so the moon or my face or my massive forehead in this case, <laughs> they are going to actually be flipped. So the way you've got to look at it is when the laser engraves onto the dark surface, it burns away the dark surface and leaves a light surface. So it means Anything that it sees dark on there, it's going to burn away, so it's going to look light. Anything it sees light in the picture, it's not going to burn very much, so it's going to look dark. That means if we engraved at the moment, it would look back to front like a negative photograph. So what we need to do is we need to invert that image. So to do that, let's go into the edit. Over here on the left, you're going to see adjustments. Click on that. Xtool have recently implemented this auto adjust button. And I find that it actually works really well. If you've got a material set, we don't. But if you click the auto adjust button, it will adjust the contrast. It will adjust the sharpness. It will just try and optimize that image for the laser engraving process. So let's click auto adjust and see what happens. So as you can see, it has actually really sharpened and fine tuned the colors a bit. And that means we can now click the invert button. And what it will do is it will flip those colors around and it will look perfect. What I will say is if we had a material set over there, like a black business card, as part of that auto adjust method, it would have automatically inverted it. I have manually done that because I haven't actually got anything set at this point. At this point, we don't need to adjust anything. We don't need to adjust the sharpness, the brightness, nothing, because I have tried this before. I've done a lot of testing on this very image, on this material, and this auto adjust seems to do a really good job. So now what we need to do is we need to specify our material settings. And like I said, I've done a lot of testing for this. So as with most of my other demonstrations, I've actually set up a material. I'm going to be doing a, a separate video soon showing how to do this because I've done a detailed tutorial on material settings and applying them. But I think I need to go into a bit more detail because a few people have been asking me about this. So you'll see on the left, if I click my image now, I've got a number of different settings I've set up here. One of them is single portrait. So if it was just me as a big picture on that, I've got settings for that. I've also got family photo settings. So if you've got a family setting or more than one subject, should I say, in your photo, these settings work. In this case, that's what we're going to be using. And as you can see, we've got infrared laser, 70 dot duration, 97% power, and 385 DPI. We are using Jarvis bitmap mode for this. And those settings are good. They will work nicely. And we're going to go through it now. The first thing we need to do, though, is frame our image to make sure it's set up. Because you'll see on my picture at the moment, it's not quite parallel. The edge of that is not parallel to the card. I'm going to need to adjust the positioning of the card, the rotation of it, to make sure it fits. And to do that, what we need to do is go to the bottom right. You're going to see a hatched box there. Click on this arrow. And we, in this case, we want an outline so that we can see our actual shape, okay? So click on outline, and then click on that box, and we'll move over and we'll see how it looks. There you go, you can see the framing box, and I am just gonna slightly adjust this so it is actually parallel and looking good. There we go, I'm happy with that, so let's move on to the engraving. Let me show you how to set that up. Right, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna process this. I'm not gonna do any special processing, we're gonna use a standard vanilla processing for this one. So click on it. Because it's a photo, it, what it seems to do in this update of Extel Studio is it uninverts it um, and shows you your photo, which I don't know if that's a bug or not. But either way, as you can see in the top right, three minutes, 21, it's going to take to do this. Let's move over. We're going to click that start button and we are going to see how it comes out. One thing I want to express to you guys before I start this is I am going to be engraving with this lid up 
therefore I will be wearing some safety glasses for this. I recommend you do it with the lid down, even though it's an infrared laser and you can't see it, it still can cause damage to your eyes. Also, this will produce loads of fine little particles. Have your ventilation set up either out of your window or into your air purifiers to make sure it's safe and you are good. Let's crack on. Let's take a look at the results and I'm sure you'll agree this has come out really, really nice. I mean, it's so clear. The detail of every single part of the photo is very clear. Everyone's contrast looks nice. I'm really happy with those results. Hopefully you can take those settings and also implement them in because these make great gifts. You can sell them for people or you can just make something for yourself to keep in your wallet. Either way, absolutely outstanding. One thing I also promised you was portrait. I've updated my image. I flipped the business card around. We've changed the orientation and I'm gonna put in an image now. Here's a photo of Walter White that I have previously downloaded. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna mask it a little bit because then what I can do is make it quite big so we can see it in its full detail on the card. So I'll drag this box, similar to what I showed you a minute ago. Just drag in the box there. I'm then going to make the photo bigger so that it fits pretty well in it. Like that, that would be good. And then I'm going to drag a box around it, create the mask, click done. And there you go. We've got our business card. I'll make it a little bit smaller. So for this one, this is a one, this is a singular picture of a person. So our dots per inch, which is our measurement here, needs to be higher because this there's a lot more resolution, a lot more detail on the photo. So if you're doing this, you need some different settings. And I have done them and I have got some really nice ones. So I'm going to switch over to single portrait. And now you'll see we're using 82 dot duration, 95% power and 495 DPI. We're also going to edit the image in adjustments and click auto adjust again. And it's going to adjust the contrast. We're going to invert it manually. And at that point, we are now ready to engrave. So I'm not going to frame this one because we've already been through that on the first engraving, but I am going to show you this engraving. So let's move on and let's see how it looks. There you have it. We've done portrait photos just like this, and we have done a family portrait photo. So single portrait and family portrait. Between the two, we have generated some absolutely amazing settings. I'm sure you will agree, they are excellent. So really, really good. Hopefully you can create some works of art yourself using those same settings. So I hope you've learned something new today. Thank you very, very much for watching. And as I've said before, check out our Facebook community groups where we share all of our settings. Also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these videos. And thank you very much for watching once again. I hope you've learned something new and let's move on to the next one.